Welcome to the 10-Minute Treasure. My name is Jeff Pospisil. And over a year ago, a friend of mine who runs a nonprofit, a small nonprofit, reached out to me and asked if there was a way to use Google Sheets to keep track of donations. And I thought to myself, yeah, that would be an awesome spreadsheet someday. Well, the day has finally come and I've made that spreadsheet and it's aimed at really smaller churches and small nonprofits. If you want to use Google Sheets or you can actually uh, download it into Excel if you want to use it that way. So I think this is going to be one of my longer videos. So what I'm going to start off with is explaining kind of how you would use this week in and week out. So if you are part of the counter team or the financial secretary and you're re responsible for the donor records, how would you use this week in and week out? And then later on in the video, I will get to more of the setup and some ideas about how to maybe archive. One of the things I want to show you is there's several tabs down here. So let me see if I can highlight those. See all those. And the last one here is instructions. And I'm going to put a link to this video here. So because if you're like me, you're going to forget as time goes on exactly how to do some things. So this, this donation one is probably the more important one. You have your date of the donation, which is usually a Sunday. The donor. So that's the family of the do that where it came from. And then your different funds. And they have several different funds here. One of the things you can do is if you can't see it all, like this one, it says mission of the mission of the what? So there, when I go right over top of that line there, you could see those two, uh, two lines there. And if I double click it, all of a sudden it makes it big enough. Mission of the month, care and con, no care and concern. So just a little hint there on how to do that. So let's go ahead and enter in the next week. So January 8th, 2023. And I'm going to copy and paste. I'm assuming that people got down, got to it, and they sorted out all the checks, sorted out all the, the cash, and they're ready to just enter stuff in. So when you're ready to do that, if you click on this down arrow, you can see all the different donors that are set up. So we have Mike Mary Thompson here that gave 250 bucks. Or I could just start typing. I could start typing, and maybe it's Mike and Rhonda. And it'll just pick out any part of their name. Um, I'm trying to think. So Sammy, let's say I got something from Sammy. And Sammy gave for uh, the mission of the month. And so on and so forth. I'm just going to quick pick some of these. And I also have a cash contribution. And if you need help counting up the cash, the second to last tab here is the cash counter. And all I did is I laid out all the denominations here and you just have to count how many 20s you have and how many ones and how many fives and all that. And um, it ends up doing the math for you because if you're like me, like fives and 20s, those seem to like a little bit more difficult to quantify. So I have $167.35. So I'm just gonna enter that here. So let's say that I have two brand new donors. And if I go to enter them, maybe it's Joe Wilson, and I go to enter it, it won't take it. Or I have a brand new fund. I, I could type it in over here, but it'll screw up all my formulas. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of small, but there's a formula right here. So you don't want to do that. So here's how you would enter in a dona donor. And this might not happen every week, but it'll happen from time to time. So there's this donors tab, it's the fourth over. And if I look at this, this is my list of donors. And so if I have a brand new donor, I would go ahead and type them in there. And I have two do new donors. Micah and Mary Nelson and Joe Wilson and West South Street and three, four, two, three, four, East North Street, both from Mitchell, South Dakota. I do a lot of control C, control V, because I just want to make this kind of quick. So your donors, when you click that drop down, they appear in the same order that you enter them in that list. So what I would normally do 
is I would click somewhere in this list, go to data, which is right up here, sort sheet, and sort A to Z. I just like them in order. Um, maybe I'm picky, but anyway, that's what I like to do. So then I see uh, Nelson in its proper place. And if I just know Joe, I can go right here and enter Joe Wilson. And maybe they gave to the Vacation Bible School Fund, so VBS. So if I need a new fund, click on the Funds tab, which is the fifth one. VBS, Vacation Bible School. I always think it's nice to include a description. It just makes it easier um, to remember. It's, <laughs> I, I, the older I get, the more uh, hints I need in my memory. So then that has added it in there. So again, these funds are in the same order as they are here. And one of the things I did do is I froze the cells. So as we go down, see I'm scrolling down right now. It'll just keep going down like that, but it'll keep the, the names of the funds and the do date and donor there. And if I end up with a lot of funds, I can scroll that way. So just to, just to let you know. So let's say they each gave 50 bucks for Vacation Bible School and Joe also gave 20 bucks for the general fund. Okay, now if that my counter team, they might be done almost. The very last step is your treasurer or whoever keeps up your books, um, the accounting records, they're gonna need a counter sheet. And so that's the second tab. And here, I have it set where that would have been the last Sunday, January 1st, 2023. When I change this to January 8th of 2023, all of a sudden, all the amounts have changed here because it is just summarizing everything we did here. So this is something you could print out. Um, here's the print. And you could, it's, it's a little bit small here, but you could see I tried to make it enough room in case you have a lot of funds. Uh, to go ahead and do that. There's the total. That's the total that the treasurer should see hit the bank, and it should be the same as the deposit slip that you receive back from the bank. There's also these signature lines. So when you go to print it, the people that counted the money should sign it. So that way we know who signed it, and uh, we have some assurance on that. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. So week in and week out, that's what you would do. Donations. If there's a new do donor or a new fund, you would add those. And then you end with this counter sheet. That's your final report. All right, so I'm not sure of any other way to do this. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna share it. And what you'll need to do as soon as you get access to it is you are going to want to make a copy. And this is good for a number of reasons. So you can make a copy. And what I would normally do is make uh, one copy for each year. So every year I'd start off with a fresh copy and I would actually use last year's copy is probably where my starting point. So I go ahead and I would make a copy. So let's just say 2024 for the sake of, um, yeah, for the sake of this. And I'm going to have to zoom in a little bit again. And so what I would do is once I start 2024, I would go ahead and select all my data and I would go ahead and delete it. And then if I have any donors that maybe you know, they passed away or they moved away and they're not gonna donate anymore, go ahead and delete those ones too, and then go ahead and resort it. And if there's any funds that I don't use anymore, I could delete those too. So maybe we already did our building fund. It's already done. People have given to it. And then I could resort that as well. Oh gosh, I'm not sure how the resorting will work. So he, yeah. What I'm going to do, is I don't want to resort it now that I think about, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and resort it. Not sure if that'll mess something up or not. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm going to hit the undo button. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste. So I'm going to select these cells and I'm going to move them up. And then I'm going to delete the one, the extra duplicate one. And that seems to have worked well. I got rid of my building fund. All right. 
So that's what I would do every year is I would go ahead and copy the previous year, make my updates, and then go from there. By the way, just going to show you, some of you probably prefer Excel to Google Sheets. You can also just download this in Excel and do the same thing. Every year, make a copy, go ahead and delete out all the don donations, and update your donor and fund list, and then go on from there. It should work the same way, but that's under file, download, and then you can do it in Excel, or there's this ODS. So if some of you use like an open office type of one, uh, you can definitely do that there. So a free version of Excel. And that is about it. The only thing I wanna mention, one last thing, and I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. Move it to trash. Uh, and there we go. I think I did this before too, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove this one as well. Move to trash. The last thing I want to mention though is there is this donor summary one. So if you want to see how people have been giving throughout the year, this would be a helpful one. Right now they are in order of, uh, of your donors, which is fine, but you could also sort this by who is your top giver. And let's go ahead and do that. Oops, actually didn't, I went, uh, I went the wrong way. So I'm going to hit the undo button, undo. So data, sort, Z to A. So highest to lowest. And then you'd be able to see that anonymous is our number two giver and so on and so forth. Uh, Pete and Samantha haven't given anything yet. Maybe they moved away, whatever. And normally I'm going to, I'm going to undo this just because um, I'm, I'm going to undo it. I could add, by the way, a total screen above this to total each fund, which probably would be helpful. I might even do that before I make this public. Um, but that'll be the last thing that I would change from this. And by the way, you're free to change this any way that you see appropriate, that you want to work. I'm not going to provide any uh, support for it. If you mess something up, go ahead and grab a new copy and start over again. All right, hopefully that's helpful to you. Um, part of the reason I did this is, especially for the small churches and small nonprofits, you know how expensive that software can be to track donations. Yet, it's still important to do it. So this is a free way to do it. It's maybe a little bit clunky and feel free to do whatever you want with the, the file. I've, I've linked, linked it in the description. Go ahead and make a copy of it. Do whatever you want with it. Uh, but hopefully it'll be a blessing to you and your ministry. Till next time, God bless.